So me and everyone else involved decided to paint Tyranids this time around. New sculpts just look too good to pass up. But the prospect of painting 60 plus minis uh, is a lot to think about. So I wanted to kind of break down the perfect paint scheme that I would enjoy doing across a large So in order to make this process a little less daunting, I've broken it down into five different steps just so that we can really visualize and see how easy we can have them. Step one should be inspiration. Read lore about your army. Look at artwork of your army. Look on Instagram of other people's picture, um, paint jobs of their army. Watch battle reports of your army. Just find different ways to get excited about your army and see what colors, schemes, bases, special effects, different things like that stand out to you and take note. You know, whether that be screenshots, just little scribbles in your notes on your phone, just things that really stand out to you and make you excited about your army. For me, when I was looking through this, I knew I wanted a bright fluorescent green and maybe a reddish or purplish tone. I just knew that I wanted some bright, vibrant colors. Now, step two is kind of hand in hand with step one, and that is references. Once you have kind of decided on a specific imagery, you need to find reference photos that can be utilized when it comes to actually painting and executing the effects you're interested in. I really like to look on Instagram and see how other people have used colors, schemes, or effects that I'm interested in. Artwork can also be a really great source as well, especially if your army has a lot of it to draw from. All right, it's about time we actually paint something. Become inspired by whatever, uh, you know, different avenues we've decided to go through. We've developed references to draw from, and now we can start executing this paint scheme. For my first attempt, I'm going with a magenta, kind of reddish purple skin tone, and then a bluish green carapace with a bright green for my accents. I started with the skin giving an all over base coat of an 80-20 dark plum and dark magenta from Monument Hobbies. I then began to sketch out highlights on the race services, adding more dark magenta into my mix, and then adding GW's Emperor's Children into my mix in small amounts as I brightened my highlights over and over and over. The final highlights of the skins were then done with mixing in a little bit of AK's sickly pink. For the carapace, I base coated it all in GW's Incubi Darkness. I then did a quick edge highlight with AK's Ocean Blue, as well as the little essential line striations that are done on the all Tyranid carapaces. I did another small highlight with GW's Fenrisian Gray, but I do think ultimately I should have pushed this highlight brighter and into a wider area. For the little details across this mini, I did the hooves and claws with just a pure black and then highlighted it with a simple gray. I painted the little vents and the eyes with white and then I did a fluorescent green over top. The gun, I tried to do this like fleshy purple but it didn't really turn out and I kind of got fed up with it and never really finished it. So I have completed my first scheme. Now it is time for step four, assessment. I have broken assessment into three parts. Part one, do I like it? Uh, the answer is kinda. The carapace doesn't really have any green tone that I wanted, and the skin is a little bit more pink than purple. I don't know if ultimately this is what I'm going to end up doing. Part two, would I want to paint this scheme across an entire army? And honestly, I think this scheme would look pretty good across a large amount of minis in all honesty. It has kind of a high fleet behemoth vibe to it, and so I th think overall it would actually look really good. Part three, what would I change? Well, I think I really lost sight of adding green to the carapace, and I think the skin went a little bit more red than purple. So I think ultimately I would add more green to the carapace and more of a purple tone to the skin. So we have hit an essential part in our journey. Are we going to move forward with this scheme or are we not going to move forward with this? This is an important part. You know, have you accomplished everything you want with your scheme? And is this something you're comfortable moving forward with to paint your entire army with and some enjoy painting and enjoy having on the table? For me, the answer is no. I don't think my first scheme really captured ultimately what I was interested in. A little bit too close to high fleet behemoth. That's not quite what I'm going for. So we are going to go back to step one and restart our journey to come up with another scheme based on what we learned. I saw this picture on Instagram from Night in Cantor painting, and I really, really liked it, and I really liked the colors in it. So this picture picture became my main point of inspiration is I also really liked the dark to light tone on the skin. So for scheme two, 
the skin, I base coated it in royal purple from Vallejo, and then I gradually did highlights, adding in small amounts of GW's Demonet Hide, then Warp Fiend Gray, and then my final highlights with a little bit of Fenrir in Gray. After I completed my highlights to the kind of grayish purple, kind of cool gray, cool purple tone, I then took my royal purple, thinned it down extremely um, thin so that I could kind of glaze in towards the ends of the claws and limbs that royal purple tone back and kind of give that transition from dark to light. So for the carapace, we're actually going to start the same and base coat it in Incubi Darkness. And then I did a kind of all over volumetric highlight with dark yellow green from Prochrome. Then I used ethereal green from Two Thin Coats and mixed this with a little bit of my dark yellow green and did kind of a smaller volumetric highlight. And then I also did an edge highlight with the ethereal green and kind of left it there. I think the carapace is a little bit more of a swampy green than I may end up doing in the final result, but overall I'm much happier with this carapace. So for the accent, accent spots, the vents, the eyes, the gun, the gun tubes, all those little doodads, I pretty much went for a straight copy of my inspiration pick with this kind of bright, bright blue. I base coated all of these spots in AK's Ocean Blue, and then I did a pure Fenrisian Gray highlight. I then took the Croxagor Scales Contrast Paint and put it in all of these different spots. And then I did a final highlight with Vallejo Sky Blue, and I'm really, really happy with how these turned out. They're bright, they're vibrant, and they look really, really good. So I know what you may be thinking. This is pretty different from my first scheme. And yeah, it is. But I think I was pretty far off on my first scheme from what I was really wanting at heart. I think some minor tweaks may come when I paint the rest of my army, but ultimately this second scheme is most likely going to be kind of the overall army scheme. And I'm really happy with it, and I think it much more inhabits the tone and feel that I wanted ultimately. So let's say you finished your second scheme. We're still not ultimately happy with it. Now you definitely can go back and repeat this process again and hopefully find a third scheme. Okay? But if you still aren't happy with it, I would kind of stop and take a break. Maybe go paint something entirely different, kind of refresh your mind, refresh your, refresh your creative energy, and come back to this project. Reassess if any of the other schemes you did are something you're happy with, or maybe there's some minor tweaks you can do. But if you repeat this process too many times, you're going to end up having a bunch of different minis in your army painted totally different and you're gonna have to maybe strip them or paint over them or you'll just have a mismatched army and it kind of look messy or weird or something like that so it would be a little bit more sparing and really try to be introspective really do a lot of research in step one and step two to help limit this potential something to note i need to you know ultimately consider my second scheme across an entire army as this took me probably around an hour and a half to paint this one termagant and that's not exactly time effective across a ton of different minis so i think ultimately i'll probably make the painting process a little bit more simple it may not look as great but just so that it can be a little bit more replicatable and that's not a word but we're gonna go with it across your entire army maybe it's more these five steps help simplify this process and make it a little bit more easier to understand and make the whole process far less daunting and hopefully ultimately lead to you having an entire army of miniatures in a scheme you're really really happy with remember inspiration reference color theory those things are there to be utilized and they can use all the resources at your disposal and hopefully you can end up playing a game with a fully painted army if you enjoyed this video give it a like give it a subscribe it helps me out really helps the channel grow i've enjoyed doing this so much and i really appreciate your support there's tons of other ways in the description to support me or hang out with me and pay minis talk minis whatever i always really appreciate it and of course do not forget to elevate your game night